is a presumption of capacity. It's a phrase that gets used a lot in the healthcare world, and it actually has a very particular meaning, and it can have more than one meaning depending on the context. So I'm going to try to break through the confusion and explain what is meant by a presumption of capacity. So let's start with the word presumption. So presumption is about presuming something. So presuming or assuming, the word assume is used in some other jurisdictions outside Ontario, presuming or assuming that a person is capable of making their own decisions. So that is the starting place in the law. For example, in the Healthcare Consent Act in Ontario, that's the law that talks about making medical decisions. So who decides treatment? And if you're not capable, who decides for you? That whole law is based on this idea of a presumption of capacity. And that is why when you go to healthcare professionals, most of your experiences have probably been just it's been assumed that you're capable. You are given some test. No one's asking you questions about cognitive impairment or mental illness or dementia. You're, you're assumed to be capable. That's the starting place. So when you go to a chiropractor, a dentist, wherever, you are presumed capable. That is because we have a presumption of capacity. So the healthcare consent act says that's the starting place, presumption of capacity. So what are we presuming a person to be capable of? Well, in the health context, we are presuming capacity when it comes to decisions about treatment. So medical decisions about medicine or surgery, so treatment. We've got admission to a care facility. So for the most part, that means making decisions about going to a long-term care home and personal assistance services. So those are services that might be provided by PSWs, for example, assistance with hygiene or mobility. So there's all these different categories of decisions for which we are presumed capable but people cannot be presumed capable indefinitely because we also in law have a concept of incapacity so when does that kick in so the presumption of capacity basically ends when there are reasonable grounds that's the phrase in the healthcare consent act reasonable grounds i often describe that as red flags to think a little bit more deeply about whether a person is in fact capable. So the starting place is presumed capable, but if there's reasonable grounds to believe maybe a person's not capable, then the onus is on the healthcare professionals involved in their care to think and ask more questions and really go a little bit deeper to figure out if the person who's consenting is in fact capable. So the presumption is not, um, does not go on indefinitely, but if there are those signs that a person might be incapable, it can be appropriate to say, let's slow down a minute. I'm gonna think a little bit more ask the person more questions and get a better sense of whether they are or are not capable. And it's really important to figure that out because if a person's capable, they make the decision for themselves. If they are not capable, someone else is usually deciding for them. So part of getting legal, valid, informed consent means figuring out who's giving that consent. And to figure out who's giving the consent, we have to figure out who's capable. So that's a little bit about the presumption of capacity. That concept exists in some other non-health areas of law as well, but within the healthcare system, presumption of capacity is just assuming a person is capable unless there are red flags and re reasonable grounds to believe otherwise. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.